there's one tiny element that you can add to your lead generation funnels, sales funnels, and online training funnels that just might give people the push they need to complete the signup process. And that element is the progress bar. In addition to providing just a subtle amount of pressure, progress bars are great because they help people know what to expect and what to do next. In this video, I'll show you how you can add progress bars to your funnels and how to make the most of the features that come with the progress bar element in Thrive Architect. What I'd like to show you today are some practical examples of how you can use the progress bar element. So let's start with a simple lead generation funnel. Let's take a look at what this example looks like. So this is a home page, and if we click on this button, we can get a free guide. And you can see the progress bar right up here. Um, the idea is that when a visitor sees that progress bar, it encourages them to complete the form. It's just a subtle bit of pressure that will hopefully increase conversions. So let's go ahead and complete the form now. And when they see a completed progress bar on the thank you or confirmation page, it gives a visitor a sense of closure that they've finished the signup process. One thing you might have noticed is that on this page, the animation started right about here around the 50% mark and filled in um, up to 100%. And I will show you exactly how to set those values. So let's go over how to put this type of progress bar into your lead generation funnel. Here we have a Thrive box. Let's go ahead and add a progress bar to this box. Now let's choose a template. All right, so here we have our progress bar. Now every progress bar has two sections. There's a completed section on the left and an incompleted section on the right. And if you want, you can customize each of those sections independently. But right now, let's just start with the main progress bar element. So with progress bar highlighted in the uh, breadcrumbs, let's go to the main options tab. And let's just go through these settings. So right now we do want a simple progress bar. Um, right now I have it set to inherit the page smart colors, but if you turn this off, you can choose a different color that will affect both the completed and incompleted section of the progress bar. Um, if you want to show the label, this is the label, you can have it show above, below, or inside of the bar. You can't quite see it, but it is there. Um, for right now, I'm going to turn that off. You can choose a different bar height if you like. Right now, we'll go with 20 pixels. You can select the current progress by uh, clicking this slider. Right now, we're going to go with 50%. And in the advanced options down here, you can have it fill, uh, fill the progress bar on view. So let's go ahead and turn that on. I tend to like the fill speed to be uh, fast. And you can choose where you want the animation to begin. So if I were to put in 25% here, the animation would start right about here. So this part would already be filled. And then as soon as the page loads, it would uh, fill from this point up to here. Um, now, th now let's look at enable dual progress. Let's turn this on and I'm going to slide this over to sure 72% sounds good. So what dual progress is, is it's mainly intended to help your viewers understand where they are now and where they're going to be once they complete the step that they are currently on. And this is especially helpful if you're putting your visitors through say, a five step process. And some of those steps are going to take maybe more time or more effort to complete than other steps. This is a nice way to indicate to your visitors what to expect and therefore also encourage them to stick with the funnel or the process that you're having them complete. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off dual progress because I don't really need it. Now I'd like to show you what it looks like when you want to um, customize either the completed or the incompleted uh, section of the bar. So I'll click on this and you'll see that it has progress bar, progress line wrapper, and progress bar completed. So if you want to customize the completed section, make sure it says uh, progress bar completed in the breadcrumbs. 
And then you can go over here to the main options and you can select a different color just for that section of the bar. Now, if you do that, you should know that it will override what you set up in the main progress bar element, um, uh, the main options just for the progress bar element. So I'm gonna go ahead and cancel out of that. But you can also uh, customize the borders and corners just for the completed section of that bar. As well, you can um, customize the incomplete section on its own. Uh, if you want, you can turn on candy stripe animation just for the incomplete section. If you don't see anything happen after you turn this on, that's because the color is set to white. So if you click on this and just select a new color, there you'll see the, uh, the candy stripe animation. All right, so let's go ahead and add some text uh, above the progress bar. Now, you might notice that the spacing here is a little bit off, and there's various places where you can adjust the margins and padding for the progress bar element. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on either the completed or incompleted sections so that you can see the progression of the breadcrumbs here. One place to look for paddings and margins that are already set are in the progress line wrapper level. And then you can go to layout and position and you'll see that you do already have um, 20 pixels set for the top and bottom margins. So I'm gonna make that zero. And also you can check the progress bar element level and you'll see that those have margins and padding also. All right, so the last thing that you'll need to do is you'll need to save this element so that you can use it on other pages um, of your funnel. So I'm gonna click on this icon right here and I'm going to save it as a template and I'll name my template and then I'll click Save New Template. All right, so now let's insert that progress bar on the thank you page. Here we are on the thank you page. Let's go ahead and add the template that we just created. So I'll click on the Add Element button and let's go to Templates and Symbols. I'll add that where I want it to show up. Here's our progress bar. And now I can go ahead and customize this um, so that it's completed. So let's make sure that we go to progress bar and then current progress should be 100%. And now let's go to advanced and we want the animation to actually start at 50%. And that's it. That was how to add a progress bar to a very simple lead magnet funnel. The progress bar element can also be used to guide your visitors through a series of steps. So in this example, we'll use it to guide people through a double opt-in lead generation funnel. Let's take a look at the example. So here we have a home page. Let's go ahead and click this button to get the lead magnet. And that triggers a Thrive box. You'll notice that the progress bar in this light box looks quite a bit different from the plain one in the previous example. Uh, this one has nodes that mark distinct steps in the process. It also has a different icon at each node. And this can help your subscribers understand that they need to do more than just fill out the form. They also need to check their email before they're fully subscribed. So let's go ahead and fill out the form. Submitting the form will bring people to this page, uh, telling people that they need to confirm their email address. And so presumably after someone sees this page, they will check their email and click a button to confirm their subscription to the email list. And that will bring people to the confirmation page. And you can see at the top here that the progress bar is complete. So let's go ahead and insert this type of progress bar into a lead generation funnel that uses a double opt-in. Before we get started, I wanted to mention that you can use the same set of steps I'm about to show you for pretty much any funnel that has multiple steps. For example, you can use it for a video series training or a webinar signup. The process for inserting a progress bar is basically the same. 
Okay, so here we have a Thrive box. Let's start by putting a progress bar at the top of the box. Let's go through the main options here on the left. So the type of progress bar that we have is one with nodes because it has these nodes right here. Right now we have it set to inherit the page smart colors, but if you want, you can turn that off and you can choose a new color if you like. We do want the labels to be shown and if you want, you can choose uh, either above the bar or below the bar. You can also choose which labels you want displayed. Um, right now we have it set to all. If you want current, that means that only the label for the current step will be shown. You can also do first and last. So only the first label of the series and the last label will be shown. You can choose a different bar height if you like. I'm pretty good with four pixels. And before we do current progress, we'll need to make sure that we have the right number of nodes. So let's go ahead and do one more because I know that this whole process will need four nodes. Now I need to make sure that all of the labels are shown and I'm gonna go ahead and customize the labels. To set the actual progress for this progress bar, you'll need to make sure that the progress bar element is highlighted in the breadcrumbs. Then you can go to current progress and use the slider. Next, we'll have to make sure that we are showing the right icons for each step. So I'll just go up to one of the icons and I'll click on that. Then I'll go up here to the left hand corner and where it says state, I'll need to choose normal and that will give us the option to change the icon. So I'll just click on the change icon button here and I'll just type in what I'm searching for. And you can go ahead and do that for each of the nodes. So just click on an icon. You'll need to make sure that the state is normal and then click the change icon button. When you're finished making your customizations, you can save the progress bar as a template and that way it's easy to use on other pages of your funnel. So I'll just click up here, make sure that the progress bar element is highlighted in the breadcrumbs. And I'll go to the save as a template button right here. And I'll make sure it says save as a template and I'll give my template a name. Next, let's go to the page that says check your email and let's bring in this progress bar that we just created. All right, here we are on the page that tells people to go and check their email. So let's bring in that template Let's go to the add element button. Let's search for the template and symbols element and let's drag that where we want it. Now let's just choose the template that we created. All right, so the only thing we really need to do is adjust the progress of the progress bar. So let's click on this and let's go to current progress and let's adjust that. And as you can see, you can actually do half increments if you like. Uh, for this particular example, I'll just do whole increments. All right, so we're pretty much done with this page. Let's move on to the confirmation page. Here we are on the confirmation page and we're going to do the exact same thing. We'll just go over here to the add element button. Let's search for templates and symbols and just drag that over to where you want it. Let's click on that progress bar. Oh, okay, so it looks like we need to adjust the spacing just a little bit. We can go ahead and adjust the progress of the progress bar. And that's it. So as you can see, it is very easy to add a progress bar to your marketing funnels. In the next example, I'll show you how to use the progress bar in product reviews. So let's take a look at this page here. Let's scroll down and we saw the progress bars animate. In our example today, our entrepreneur has reviewed an app called Learn to Read, and she has used the progress bar element to communicate to the audience how she rates the app overall, the price of the app, and the app's ease of use. 
and you'll see here that she's using a double progress bar. So this is just another use for the dual progress bar. You don't have to use it just in a step-by-step -step process, but you can use it also to show a range. So let's go ahead and learn how to use progress bars for product reviews. Here we are in Thrive Architect. Let's go ahead and add a progress bar to our page. Let's just choose something simple. All right, so let's go ahead and go through the main options. Right now we do want a simple progress bar. Um, right now the progress bar is inheriting the smart colors uh, for the page, but if you want to turn that off and select a new color, you can easily do that. We do want to show the label because that is the label uh, for that particular parameter that we are rating. In fact, we can go ahead and change that right now. Okay, let's click back into that main options tab. Um, if you would like to change the bar height, you can do that here. You can change the current progress, which I actually do want to do. Let's make it about 95 because we really like this particular app. Um, we can turn off dual progress since we don't need that right now. And as far as uh, filling animation, let's turn that on. Let's do fast and let's start at zero. So that way the bar will animate all the way from this side and go all the way to here. All right, so as far as spacing, there are a couple different places where you can adjust the spacing. And I'm going to click in the completed section so that I can see the progress line wrapper level. And let's click on that and then go to layout and position. And you'll see that there are margins and padding set for uh, that particular level. So you can change this if you need to. And the other place where you can change the spacing for the progress bar is in the actual progress bar level. And you'll see that under layout and position, there are some padding uh, margins and padding set. When you're happy with your adjustments, then you can duplicate the progress bar to add more parameters to your review. So just make sure that the progress bar element is highlighted in the breadcrumbs and then go to the duplicate button and duplicate it as many times as you need and then make the necessary adjustments. For pricing, I am going to go ahead and turn on dual progress just so that you can see how it works. I'm going to decrease the current progress and now you can see uh, the dual progress bars. So that's a quick look at how to use the progress bar element in Thrive Architect. And by the way, all of the pages that I showed you today were built using pre-built landing pages in Thrive Architect. The opt-in forms were built with Thrive Leads and the website itself was built with Thrive Theme Builder. All of these tools and more come with Thrive Suite. So if you don't have Thrive Suite yet, visit the link below and grab it today. Let us know down in the comments if you have any questions about progress bars, and I'll see you in the next video.